Episode three. Let's get it wrapped up. So time to get the roof squared up and the B pillars. So last time we were poking around here, we noticed that these two services did not line up any longer. What I figured out with the moving things around that I had a weird arch here in the center. It was just cause uh, it's misshaping from aligning the sides and whatnot. So I went ahead and put a little weight on there with just my chain fall, just enough to uh, give it a tweak. And as you can see, that actually lines things up quite well. So I'm gonna go ahead and build this filler piece here and then move on to the B pillars. <sighs> so I have to make this piece here, which you can see is a little, uh, little funky. So I was messing around doing like a test piece here so, I'll go like that. So, we've seen how to do this. So, I think I'll work on this first, figure out how to make a, a better pattern, and then we'll go from there. It's honestly an absolutely gorgeous day, and I'd rather drive my car around and, uh, you know, screw it off. But, hey, we got work to do. rolling over here to the pipe anvil which I can't uh, recommend one of these enough I'm trying to figure out how to see if this will work no well, that ain't working let me get some a good little pry bar behind it That's a beginning. Well, that's a beginning of something. So I didn't like the first version. It, uh, it wasn't working out the way I wanted to. So I'm gonna start again, but I'm gonna do it backwards. I'm gonna start with the top section here, create this, and then try to chase the bends on the back side. So this might be rough draft number two. Maybe. like something all right let me see if I can get the other bend hmm. so now I got another problem I can't get that into the brake so I gotta work through that problem let's go back to the pipe bender or the pipe anvil have you So, get that out of the way. So on this side here, I've got a square shank. This side, I got a round shank. 
so maybe I can get <laughs> go ahead and say that's not gonna happen So at this point, I think my course of action will be to cut it here and then make a second piece and weld it together. Because with the tooling that I have, which isn't much, uh, I cannot do that. Now, if I had a, uh, say like a pentangel or something like that, then I could, you know, make the tooling to do this, but I don't have that. So I've got to think uh, out of the box. So one other thing I've got to do is this bend here is a little tight. It's got a little bit bigger of a radius on the car. So we're gonna utilize this as a die that I made. It's actually a wood splitter welded to a shank that sits in my, uh, my anvil there. So I took it and I ground it down to a nice rounded point. Use this for different things, but pretty handy. And again, I can't recommend building a pipe anvil enough. This thing is super handy. So I'm gonna chase the edge with this thing. You can see it opens it up just enough to match that compared to that side. So see, that looks better. Now let me trim that off. So I'm thinking before I ruin this. I got this line here. I can clamp it in my brake and then bend it by hand down on that line to at least get a starting point and then finish it off in the brake. Let's try it. First I'll measure again. Sometimes you got to think outside of the normal use of your tools. <clears throat> that may have actually worked. Well, something I can work with. Yes, butter, 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 butter. All right, fine tune it. All right, I think I'm happy. Happy with that. Well, at least two points I can sort of trim it and then really start fine tuning it. With that, my friend, is going to work. Question is, is do I want to cut the roof to fit the panel or the panel to fit the roof? Maybe a little bit of both. That is again the beauty of this thing is the versatility to build the little tools for it and then they all mount to it. All right, getting closer. I think I'm gonna clamp that in place and get the old air saw out and give it a tweak. Well, that's mounted up there. And it certainly appears to flow just like I want it to. Ready to cut.
And there it is. Not bad for an air conditioning repair man. Other side now. I have to do that one on time lapse. Because that took uh, about four hours. Only. Well, uh, that's about good enough for now. Uh, it appears that a tree or something at some point fell on the roof of the car because it was all crushed in here and same on the other side. So it's been a little uh, little slow going to get that uh, straightened out, but it's good for now until I get the top welded in and we'll finish it up from that point. Now time to move on to the B pillar. Mm -hmm. So I've been kind of messing around with uh, the B pillar here on this side. It's sort of my test piece. As you can see, I had to extend the top and extend the side. So it will indeed, well, somehow fit in here. Hang on. Struggling. There we are. So you can see, extended this section here, extended this section here to meet this. And then it'll weld and square up here. So I'm gonna burn this one in, then I'll show you how I did it on the other side. You know, no secrets around here. No secrets at all. Of course, I can't show you all the pain and misery. I mean, really, I gotta have some successes. I don't know where that the other pillar went. So yeah, right here as well on this side. It's like something fell this direction and squish it all down on both sides. So this side is not nearly as bad, but once I get that welded in, then I can butter everything up, get the rest of this paint off it when I feel like being dirty. I'd be a bad kind of dirty. Mm -hmm. Using my uh, little mini uh, planishing hammer here. I need to make a special dolly to get in behind the uh, the inner structure, let me show you. That guy right there, I gotta get a dolly I can make to get in there. I haven't quite uh, got to that point yet. But it'll make it a, a lot easier to get everything straightened out. Cause this section here, I can't get a dolly past about here. So I gotta get something that comes in. I kind of played with a couple designs so far, but none of them have really done what I wanted to. So work in progress.
gorgeous day for a car show. Oh, best parking ever. So yesterday after the car show, I went ahead and came back and welded in my B-pillar and started on the door. Let me show you. So I got this all welded in. For the most part fit. Kind of started playing with the door a little bit here. Kind of looking at how to make all this happen. I'll start on the other side and I'll show you step through step on that one. But uh, I've been kind of chipping at this. Really, I don't know, a few different days here and there and just sort of try to figure it out. This is actually probably the most complex part of the chop itself. Then of course I ran into some problems. My uh, TIG torch, uh, the head is broken. So it's got like the chicken neck now. Uh, so I'm gonna have to order a new one of those because that's not gonna fly. It doesn't, uh, doesn't weld correctly at the moment here, so. Look at that. And then, of course, the most tragic news. I uh, broke my favorite hammer. My uh, Plum 1427. So, i got to find me one of those because that's uh, that was almost as bad as like losing my dog or something like that. So, we're going through struggles here. Let's see if I can actually accomplish something today. It's gorgeous outside, so... I got the lazies, but we'll see. So, still whittling away on the doors here. Let me show you. All right, so this is where we're at. I've got the doors pieced together here. So, a few things. Now, we took three inches out of the pillar here. But that doesn't necessarily correspond to three inches here because it kind of comes in. So, this was actually two and about seven eighths removed from here. And this is a filler piece of a, an inch and a half. And then here, removed two and five eighths. And that gives me a nice, nice gap. But now if you remember when we took the car apart, we noticed that this door gap uh, gets real funky. So what I'm doing is look, it's good down here, all the way down, and then gets like, like it was stamped wrong. So I made this piece here, just a little piece of angle. I'm going to weld in there to correct that gap. So nothing too special, just a little piece here. Put it on the uh, put it on the shrinker, and that'll be about it. So I'm done with this door. I'm not going to weld it today because my TIG welder's broken. So let's start the other side. See if we can't screw that up. Or at least accomplish it a little bit easier. That took me, I'm about seven hours into the corridor window and the door at this point without welding. So I'm gonna try to do this side a lot quicker now that I got a better game plan. So one of the, uh, the funny things about this car, uh, of how ill-fitting these things are, let me show you. So this here, this gap, it gets funky down here, so I mean that's obviously going to have to be corrected, although the front gap is perfect. So explain that. And then, if you look at this line here, this line here is just about perfect. But if you look at the top, it's off by a solid eighth of an inch. So, either the door is stamped wrong or the quarter panel's stamped wrong, but they do not line up. Even if I take and kind of lift the door up, the bottom one still lines up perfectly, but the top is off by a solid quarter of an inch. 
So I'm going to leave the door actually where it's at because I like this here. We'll use that as a reference and then we'll, well, I won't be doing that, but perhaps some body guy at some point will have some creative mud work. I don't know. But that's a little funky. This, this needs to be either the door trimmed or this moved over here. So it's like the car was assembled wrong or maybe this thing took a hit. Uh, I have no idea. Actually, if you look here, this does look bent, like it's the whole quarter's forced forward. And there is no easy way to fix that without either cutting this whole quarter panel and moving it over or possibly unbolting the running board and then tying a chain to the back of it to the back of the body and pulling the body a little bit. I don't know. Let's get started on this quarter window. All right, so the first thing we gotta do is we gotta make a pattern. So dig around, find some cardboard. This is what I got here. Yes, the pumpkin spice honey nut Cheerios. I live with all girls, it's my life. So besides, it actually makes good cardboard for making pattern, you know. Go ahead and uh, Having three daughters has been a, a one heck of an adventure. There is no point in any day where there's not somebody either screaming or crying around here. And it's never me. I usually just hide. It's a, it's a hostile environment sometimes. And no, they're not in sync, in case you ask. That would be too easy. to get this thing done it is now february 24th and this thing has to be at the lone star roundup in uh, i believe first week of april and it's going to be a featured card so uh it has to actually be there and look good so if you want to see it uh i'll be there stop my by give me a holler i might have my 40 with me if it actually runs it's always a gamble but if you look here we're gonna start with our, our pattern. Let me find a magnet. So, look at me. I wanna get a straight edge. So making sure everything is square with the jam here. We'll move this around a little bit. Starting point. I want my pattern to match that drip rail, so I'll just kind of eyeball that a little bit. Luckily, all those years uh, doing school art projects pays off, you know. There's a good starting point. So I'll just mark where my cuts are. So then I got sort of my cuts there, so then I'll just transfer that over to my, my piece here. I'll just trim this a little bit here. I can remember where I cut it at. Obviously, leaving it just a just a tad longer than it needs to be. It's easier to uh, leave it long and just slowly cut into it and sort of sneak up on is what you want to do. You don't want to get too aggressive. Alrighty, so. Now I know that the top corner here needs to meet the top corner there, so 
you mark that. So I need to start with this point here because that's where the top of it is going to weld in. You can see our pattern is getting close. Just trace that back, that mark there. All right. So then back to this. So that will go like that. And that line will meet this line. And that right there is pretty much what we need to make for a filler piece. So we need to make this piece here and this piece here. And then, once that is lined up there, then we can start with what we're going to cut down here. So that's our cardboard template, so we'll cut it eighth inch lower and just square that up all the way around and then we'll trim that and then we'll start fitting all this first and then we'll move on to extending that. So what car shows do I need to see this uh, summer? I mean, Lone Star's kind of, you know, the generic, you know, Austin car show because, you know, it's right by my house, so how do I not miss that? But now that I got my 40 uh, actually a lot more fun to drive, uh, I need to do some road trips in that sucker. I changed the clutch out to a stock one. It was like some old 70s race crap all the clutch that was in there that made my leg hurt and I drove the car made it really miserable so hoping to have some enjoyment this summer the air grinder really is the most efficient way so now that we've got it cut we can just uh, start to fit it and sneak it up on a little bit as we're going all right, so now we're getting it close. So now it's just a matter of uh, keep grinding it down until it's where we want. And that is just about what we want. I'm going to weld it right here, right up to the corner. I'll do that with the MIG because I can't take weld upside down. So now it's just a matter of extending this piece and making this piece. That is just about exactly where I want it to weld. Definitely want to make sure that we're mindful of it being straight. That just about perfection. Let's check it against our box of Honey Nut Cheerios here. Well, I'm sorry, Pumpkin Spice Cheerios. All right, there's our pattern. Let's do it. Uh, this box of cereal is from October, by the way. It's now October, or it's now February. So it's been uh, it's been there a minute. Sometimes I forget I'm wearing the uh, the headphones. It's so nice and peaceful. There's no girls out here. I got this piece stacked in place. I just tacked it with the MIG since my TIG is not uh, user friendly today. But. <laughs> I'm thinking at this point I should probably tack this in place and then make that piece off of the or on the car, whatever you want to call it. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now 
that's secure, we can move on. Yes, I did smash my thumb with the hammer. Because why not? So since my uh, TIG machine is on the fritz while I'm waiting for a new torch to come, I figured I'd play with the uh, the new welder that they'd sent me. They sent me this, uh, let me show you, the Arca Captain. You know, when they sent it to me, I was like, yeah, I'll try it, whatever, you know. But it had some complex instructions, it's got fancy stuff, and I don't really read instructions. So I played with it a little bit and kind of, you know, moved on from there. But since my TIG is broke, you know, I threw some 025 in this thing and on 110 volts turned all the way down. It welds actually pretty nice. You know, let's just stack some dimes here, kind of give it a little try. And, you know, playing with some other stuff on it. And uh, I got to say, it's uh, actually better than my Miller welder, which now my mind you, my Miller is uh, about 10, 12 years old now. But anytime I put 025 in it, it just wads it all up. I can't control it. But this thing, uh, smooth like butter. So, I mean, it's all right if you want to read the instructions. I need to uh, make this little piece here and we will be calling this done. It's a little more grindy and sanding, but uh, you know, you get the point. So I'm gonna use this piece uh, that I cut off the door fill that hole in the uh, quarter window. Let's check the fit. No, work in progress. We'll get there. Just about. Just a small little piece, about an inch and a inch and a quarter. So since my uh, TIG machine is on the fritz while I'm waiting for a new torch to come, I figured I'd play with the uh, the new welder that they'd sent me. And they sent me this, uh, let me show you, the Arca Captain. You know, when they sent it to me, I was like, yeah, I'll try it, whatever, you know. But it had some complex instructions, it's got fancy stuff, and I don't really read instructions. So I played with it a little bit and kind of, you know, moved on from there. But since my TIG is broke, you know, I threw some 025 in this thing, and on 110 volts, turned all the way down, it welds actually pretty nice. You know, 
Let's just stack some dimes here, kind of give it a little try. And, you know, playing with some other stuff on it. And uh, I gotta say, it's uh, actually better than my Miller welder, which, now my, mind you, my Miller is, I don't know, about 10, 12 years old now. But anytime I put 025 in it, it just wads it all up. I can't control it. But this thing, uh, smooth like butter. So, I mean, it's all right if you want to read the instructions. I need to uh, make this little piece here and we will be calling this done. It's a little more grindy and sanding, but uh, you know, you get the point. Let's check the fit. Well, work in progress. We'll get there. It's just a small little piece, about an inch and a inch and a quarter. Now, let's move on to the door, I guess. So I'm going to go ahead and tack that in place for the time being. So let's start on this door jam. So we cut three inches out of the A pillar. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to start at two and three quarters. That way I can trim it down to where I want it to fit. Cut it here. I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half. And really just get our measurement here of what we're looking for. And we'll go from there. Need some. Need some more metal finishing, but that'll uh, wait till the end, I guess. So as you can see, we have our outer skin that we got to make for a filler. And then we have the inner section we have to make. And then we have the top section. It's a total of Three pieces. This is pretty straightforward on this end here. It's well all the way around. Nothing big. Mark this word, cut it. So our first step is to get over here, get it lined up where we want to make sure our gap is where we want it to be, and then mark it and trim it, and then tie it in. So I'm gonna do this one first. Go ahead and because this came down, this has actually changed this angle just just a hair. So it kind of tends to curve in a little bit. So I'll dolly this once we get it going to line everything all up. But you know the door is actually gonna tilt in just ever so slightly, which the window channel will absorb that, but it's just the nature of uh this here because this has to line up then it's got to line up back there so there's there's only so much you can do when you're cutting these things apart aside from making a whole new roof which uh i mean you know you could do but i don't think anybody wants to pay for it It's getting close. Oh, I need to actually adjust the camera so you can see what the fuck it is I'm doing, dumbass. Oh, there we go. This will be a recreation. Beep. Oh, look, it's getting close. So using my uh, paint stick as my gapping tool, I can kind of set where I want everything to be. 
so my gap is right. So I'm still a smidge tight. And I also got to be mindful that the top of the door has enough clearance of the bottom of the rail so that uh, paint stick works quite well for that. You actually can get these a little bit different sizes too. This is about an eighth of an inch. And for, uh, I don't know, five cents I think I paid for. Actually, they're free if they're uh, not looking. You can't beat them. You can see we are lined up there pretty good. It's just about ready to attack in place. Stay. Trying to do this with one hand and uh, film with the other hand is a, uh, it's a little interesting, but it actually tends to keep me a little more uh, on track of what I need to do. Otherwise, it's I'm just doing all kinds of different things. So. so that's what I'm looking for. I like that. Dolly that in right there. Disco. Of course, the bottom of the door sticks out because it's bent, but that's a different problem for a different day. Now to hack and slash over here. And then hopefully to remove all that bracing today because it is plumb in my way. Oh yeah, then that big hole. Stay. I'm taking my straight edge here. Make sure everything actually lines up where it's supposed to be. I can get this guy lined up just perfect it's about an inch and a quarter gap here that we got to fill and i think that's about ready to tack in place this is where it starts to get real exciting everything starts to come together and you start to get to see the the overall look of what it's going to be and uh it's exciting line this up here but because the roof came down that it doesn't really work real well here we see a bit of a gap there so I'm gonna take and trim that up it'll take well the top of it and blend it all maybe up to about this area here so our gap is where I want it right now it's actually hitting I don't like that and then if you go into the inside here I need to hammer and dolly down here a little bit and tweak it because it actually will hit the jam. So I just want to make sure there's enough clearance there. It doesn't rub the paint. But I'll do that once I get the filler piece in, everything fully welded, then I can play with that. Coming together. Think of a plan of action how to uh, attack this. Yeah. Let me include you in the conversation. So I just got to bridge that little gap there. Not too much, so make this piece and then I'll make the top piece and weld them together like they're supposed to. Weld those in place and then do the, uh, the outer portion. But, but I think that'll be tomorrow. It's getting late and I've kind of lost interest. You know, one of the things with doing uh, YouTube or social media, whatever, is people reach out to you to do commercials occasionally. And somebody reached out uh, to do a, a car commercial, so I'm kind of, kind of thinking what to do there. So my mind is uh, other places. But anyways, it's uh, getting late, so tomorrow will be. So see you in about, mm, I don't know, 10 seconds. <sighs> Got the parts for my uh, TIG machines. Now we're... Back in business there. So let's get this last piece finished up and get this thing wrapped up. 
So I will start with that centerpiece, which is right there. Start with that and then work with the top. Get this thing going. I'd like to have the roof on by the end of the day. All right, so it's about 1.4. I'll cut it at an uh, inch and a half and we'll start from there. Or I'll use a piece of scrap I found. <laughs> so I've been listening to this podcast by Sammy the Bull Gravato, who's like a mafia guy in New York back in the 70s and 80s. And the stories this guy has to tell is just unbelievable. Uh, I've been like binge listening to this thing for the last uh, two weeks. I think I'm on episode 30 now. And uh, this guy's got... I mean, all these crazy stories about whacking people and, you know, robbing and stuff. It's just, just crazy, unbelievable stories. I was listening to today, and uh, he sent to confirm that the Mafia killed John Kennedy and killed Marilyn Monroe. I'd have no reason not to believe him, but uh, pretty interesting. Yep, just about there. Boom, there it is. Welder up. So that fits in there like that. So I'll tack that on the inside and then make the outer piece. I'll go from here down to there. Yeah, it's kind of boring. I think maybe I'll just move forward and get it done and show you the end result because I want to put the roof on today. All right. Got that all, uh, for the most part, welded in. Do a little final sanding on it, but uh, start with the outside here. I'm going to try to use one of the cutoff pieces I got here to make a filler piece. That'll work. That right there is just about ready to weld in place. Damn, I love this thing. All right, finished off with the TIG. Let's put the roof on. Holy shit, that's it. So to do the uh, roof filler panel, we ordered a roof insert from uh, Bobby Walden, California. It's a lot more economical than it is to sit here and try to make one myself. Plus, Bobby's got a little bit better skills than I got. But uh, I think this was like 600 bucks shipped. You kind of can't beat it. And it is the last piece of the puzzle. Well, oh, look at that. That, my friend, is pure sex. And it's too fucking short. That, my friend, is perfection. Except we neglected to tell him that it was a little, uh, need to be a little longer because it's a chopped car. Look at it, no big deal. A little extension. 
But uh, look how perfect that is. That's done with a power hammer. I mean, absolutely flawless. Except for this gap here I gotta fix. Not a big deal, not a big deal. We'll just add a little filler strip there. That thing's hotter than your little sister's best friend. You know which one. Anyways, thanks for watching. Next time we'll be wrapping up the interior and all the little bits and pieces and starting the taillight. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Take care.